Hey everyone, I'd like to welcome you to this video called What Does a Sequencer Do? And you guessed it, today we're going to talk about what a sequencer does, how it works. Um, there are many different types of sequencers. There are hardware sequencers like the one I have today. Um, this is called the Arturia BeatStep Pro. It is an amazing sequencer. However, you do not need this particular sequencer to understand how sequencers work or to use them. There are sequencers available in software, uh, in Logic, in Pro Tools, in Cubase. There are sequencers built into synthesizers. There are sequencers pretty much everywhere. So with the information that you learned from this video, you'll be able to use any sequencer in the world. At least that's my goal. So, okay, so let's start off really simple. I just wanna to explain to you how I have the BeatStep Pro set up right now. Um, so the BeatStep has three sequencers. It has sequencer one, sequencer two, and a drum sequencer. For this video, we're only gonna talk about sequencers one and two. And I am using this sequencer to send information to my modular synth. So sequencer one, I'm using braids as the voice and I'm sending braids into the Jove filter. So I have an oscillator into a filter uh, for sequencer one. And for sequencer two, I have the same exact setup but different modules. So sequencer two, I have the Pico voice going into the Pico VCF3, which is also a filter. So it's oscillator to filter. Um, so those are the sounds that you'll be hearing. So right off the bat, let's explain the very basic fundamentals of a sequencer. So you may also have heard it referred to as a step sequencer. And the reason is, is because every sequencer uses steps. Okay, and on the beat step, the steps are located right here. So you have 1 through 16. And there you go. Now, what is a step? A step is basically a location on a grid where you can send information to your sound source. So every step is going to allow you to send three types of information. You can send pitch, you can send velocity, and you can send gate. Okay, so what is pitch? Well, pitch is pretty straightforward. Pitch is like the notes on a keyboard. And the way that the beat step works is I have these 16 steps, and I also have 16 knobs that correspond to each step. So on step one, I have knob one. And if I press, if I just touch the knob, actually, it shows me what note I'm on in the display over here. So this is showing that I'm on C3. So if I turn this knob, it's going to turn through all the pitches that my oscillator can play. So let's hear it. All the way to the very low so that you can't even hear it and all the way so that it goes to six octaves, so. That's a huge range of notes. Okay, so I'm gonna start my sequence on C3. There we go, C3. And, all right, on the next step, I'm gonna make that an E. And the third step, let's just make a C major chord. So I'm gonna make that a G. And on the fourth step, I'm gonna make it an octave of C to complete my chord. Great, so now I have C, E, G, C. Um, let's play it and see what it sounds like.
Okay, great. So you can see how it works. Um, you set up the notes that you want your synthesizer or your instrument to play, and then you hit play and it plays them in the order that you set them in. Now, it's playing it at a tempo, right? So the tempo is shown right here, and that's at, uh, it's at 120 BPM. So if I wanted to go slower, I can just change this to anything I want. So let's make it 80. So now it's playing at 80. Uh, let's put it back to 120. Now, with this sequencer and, and most other modern sequencers, you can tell it where this tempo information is coming from. So in this situation, the Arturia is generating the tempo itself because I'm setting it at 120 it's going to play 120. Now it can receive tempo from other sources so you can actually send tempo out from from Logic or Pro Tools or Cubase you can send that through the USB. Um, it also has a MIDI hookup so if you have uh, an instrument that sends MIDI you can send and receive that here you put it in MIDI mode. It also has a clock mode, and the clock refers to uh, an analog clock output. So it has a clock in and a clock out, which is great if you have uh, analog hardware, such as a modular or a semi-modular or analog synth. Um, you can actually send it using a cable. Um, you'd use an eighth inch mono cable. Um, so that's something that I use a lot because I have a modular, so that works out. But anyways, you can synchronize your sequencer uh, to any other device. Um, so that's really important if you want to um, get some synths working together, maybe some drum machines, maybe a song that you already have in, in Logic or, or something like that and you want it to synchronize, uh, it can do that. Let's talk about velocity now. So what is velocity? Velocity is basically dynamics. So if you've started playing an instrument or you start to get into production then you'll learn that dynamics are very very important to music sounding exciting or sounding realistic or sounding um, interesting to listen to over time. Dynamics if you read them on sheet music would be like piano for very soft sounds or forte for uh, louder more forceful sounds. To have a complete musical performance, you need to have dynamics. So you want to have some soft sections, you want to have some loud sections. If everything is just uniform, it becomes very boring to listen to because you kind of expect it. So velocity is measured on a scale from one, and I can turn the knob now that I've set it to the velocity setting. I can turn it to one, and I can turn it all the way to 127. So that's kind of an arbitrary uh, scale of numbers. They're using the MIDI scale, and that was developed in the early 80s, but 0 to 127 is how velocity works um, if you're using technology. So just learn it. Uh, 127 is the loudest, and, and 0 is nothing. So 1 is, is as quiet as you can get. Um, so this is a way to encode dynamics into the notes that you're playing so they don't all just sound at the exact same velocity. Um, now the default value is 100 so we'll just leave it at that for now um, because again this is just an overview. Okay so the third value of information is called gate. So what is a gate? Um, the easiest way to explain a gate is that it is an on-off signal. So when you have a synth or an instrument, an electronic instrument, it's basically just waiting for you to tell it what to do. So it's saying, hi, I make all kinds of fun sounds, but I don't know what to play. You need to tell me. So when we choose the pitch, that lets the synth know what note to play. When you have the velocity, that says how hard to play it. Should it be a soft note or a loud note? And then the gate is telling it when to play it. So simply by turning, by activating these steps, by turning them on, you're sending gate information. When I play this sequence, it's gonna send a gate on each of these notes and it's gonna tell it to play. So we'll try it again. 
Now, if I deactivate, let's say note three, it's not gonna play it because it's not sending any gate or pitch information. So that very simple is, is how a gate works. It's basically an on and off signal. Now, gates have lengths. So you can have it be on for a very short time or you have the gate be open for a longer amount of time. And that value is going to be from 1 to 99. You can see there, that's the top extreme. The default gate is at 50, and that just means it's, it's, ha it's open. Now, you may have noticed when I play this sequence that it plays the four notes and then nothing really happens, right? So let's, let's try it again. Okay, well the reason for that is, is I didn't program any information on these other 12 steps. The Arturia actually goes up to 64 steps for any one sequence. So you can have 64 different notes and, and, um, and, and rhythms and, and all that set up. Right now, we're gonna keep it really, really basic. Let's say that you don't even wanna use 16 steps. Let's say you just wanna use these four. Well, how do I make just these four loop? Well, on the beat step, it has this function called last step, and it's this button here. So if I hold down this button, you can see that 16, uh, step 16 is highlighted. That means that step 16 is the last step right now. I want that to be step four. So now my little sequence will loop over and over again. Let's try it. Okay, perfect. So now I'd like to add a bass sound. So I'm gonna go to sequencer two, and remember sequencer two is connected to my other oscillator. It's connected to Pico voice, so it's a totally different, separate sound. So that's the Pico voice, this is braids. Now, I want it to be a bass, so I'm gonna put it an octave down, and the way I do that is by pressing the octave button right here, so you have octave down and up, and you can go three down, and you can go three up. Okay, so just, just so you can hear that, here's in the middle, so that's all the way down, and let's go up. Okay, so that's again our six octave range from the very low to the very high. I want this to be kind of a bass sound, so I'm gonna go uh, two below. And on this sequence, I'm gonna use the 16 steps, but I'm gonna space them out. So I'm gonna space them out um, as if they were quarter notes. So I'm gonna put a note on one, five, nine, and 13. And Let's see, so I'd like note one to be a C. Okay, there's my C. I'm gonna make uh, step five be an F. Okay, and I'm gonna make step nine B and A. That's a nice bass. And then let's make 13 be a D. There we go. Okay, so now if I mute sequencer one, I will only hear my sequence on sequencer two. So let's play it. Awesome. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring in sequencer one and they'll both play at the same time.
Okay, cool. So you can see how it gets pretty easy to start making music with very little information. I want to go over just a couple more things really quickly. Um, so let's focus on just this simple sequence that I have right here, um, the four steps on sequencer one. So um, we already talked about the tempo. So I also have other options on how this sequence is going to play. So right now it's just playing forward. So when I hit play, let's open up the filter. When I hit play, it just plays it in order, this, uh, the same way every time. I can also play it in reverse by holding shift and, and pressing the reverse button. So now it plays backwards. I can also have it go from left to right and then right to left. They call that alternating. So I hold shift, I change it to alternate. Okay, so that's a nice easy way to get some variety. Um, I can also change the subdivision uh, of the rhythm. So I can change the rhythmic subdivision by holding shift. And right now it's on a 16th note, but I could make it an eighth note. Or I could make it a quarter note. Or I can make it a 32nd. So that's, that's always fun too. It's super fast arpeggio style. I can also make it a triplet and then I can change the subdivision there. So I can do quarter, eighth, sixteenth, or thirty thirty second note triplet. So let's try an eighth note triplet. So a totally different feel already just by doing that, um, it makes the sequence a lot more interesting. Now some sequencers have quantization, so they will quantize notes to a scale for you, um, which is really handy. Um, you know, basically it, it kind of makes music for you. So um, the beat step can do that. So if I hold shift again, it has these uh, modes actually here, uh, modes and scales. So it has a chromatic, which means every note. It has major, it has minor, it has Dorian, Mixolydian, harmonic minor. Uh, it has the blues scale and it has a user scale. So that means you can define your own scale, any scale that you want it to play in. Um, but this is really handy. Um, so let's say if I wanted to play uh, in uh, Dorian mode. I just hold shift and I press Dorian and now I can just turn uh, let me go to the pitch and now I can just turn the knobs and every note is going to be in the scale so I can't really play a wrong note so I'm gonna put a uh, sequencer to the last step on uh, four as well, and I'm just going to make it so it plays the C for a bass. That way we can hear the mode. So let's try it. Okay, so that's a really easy way to continually vary your sequence so it's not always playing the same notes over and over again, um, but not having to worry about playing a wrong note somewhere. So Beat Step also has this keyboard, obviously. Um, so I can play the notes as well. I don't have to use the knobs, but you know, it gives you variation you can you can choose which way you prefer to do it so let me take these steps off and i'm going to actually just play something so let's let's make up something like 
let's make up something like that. So CFG. Um, so I'm just gonna hit play and record, and now I'm gonna play the notes. Okay, so you can see how easy that was too. I, I think if you're going to make electronic music, it's in your interest to know what a sequencer does and how to use it, how you want to use it. I hope this video helped as an overview. So maybe after watching this, you can tell your friend that you know what a sequencer does. So thanks again, and as always, have fun making music.